First impressions are everything. They could leave a buzz in the crowd that echoes for years to come, but they could also leave you wondering why you gave your attention away so easily in the first place. Either way, it better be simple enough to grasp in one breath of words. A feeling, something we already know brought into the tangible world. If that feeling isn't translated and translated quickly, we're confused. GT3 RS, NA, high revs, rear wheel drive, lots of aero. Makes sense, right? Let's go racing. Ford GT, a wild supercharged V8 behind me, three pedals, and a kick of nostalgia. The perfect toy. Lexus IS500. Yes, we're still building strung out NA V8s that'll hold the family and won't offend the neighbors. Original Civic Type R, a Civic hatch that refuses to stop revving, built and stripped out for the track. Simple, right? But what if it's not? It's completely possible for the first impression at large, simmering a few years after launch, to define that vehicle for a decade to come, regardless of it being accurate or true to the real world driving experience. This happens because that impression is clouded with confusion, data, logic, and explanations. Silly things, really. Where I'm standing today with the 2024 Integra Type S, things are a little foggy, and that makes me worried. So let's break it down. at the rest of the Type S lineup, it has brand continuity. Acura is the mature luxury brand that's associated and built alongside Honda, of course. And the rest of the Type S lineup lines up with that. The MDX Type S gets adaptive suspension, air suspension, and a bunch of other luxury options because of course it is an SUV. The TLX gets kind of a subdued, mature, and subtle look. <laughs> the Integra Type S rolls up and it has fender flares. It's got an aggressive front bumper. The lines are very aggressive up there. Looks great, wide stance. And it reminds me of the aftermarket. It reminds me of quick cars that people build because they love driving and getting behind the wheel. That part makes sense. Looking at the car and comparing it with the Type R, it doesn't quite line up. In the beginning, the Type R Civic and Integra weren't really too different. They were both willing to sacrifice sound deadening, daily drivability, and comfort for lap times, right? They didn't need to be very different because they were on either sides of the ocean. Now, we begin to have a bit of friction when the Type R wants to grow up a bit and set itself apart from its poster car past. I really shouldn't have to be jumping over any hurdles to understand an Integra. It's supposed to be a simple sports sedan. So if we were to just run through all those hurdles and get straight to the point, what is the Type S? The Type S is a Civic Type R that is a true daily. Okay, now where does that leave the Type R? Of course, that car has matured. It's lost the aggressive lines. It's lost the big wing. It hasn't done that, it hasn't really. It's molded the front bumper and the fenders so it blends in a little bit more. Acura has gone the complete opposite direction here. Look at this fender flares, of course, a trend in the modified aftermarket community for the last 10, 15 years. And the Type S has fully embraced it, fully adopted that look, yet it has no wing. They have been molded in here quite nicely. Of course, the car itself is 2.8 inches wider than the standard Integra. The stance is great. I love the way this car looks. It's aggressive. It's got the vent in the hood here, of course, for cooling. It allows both uh, air to go through here for aerodynamics, but also cooling. Big intercooler down here. Brake ducts down here. 
And overall, the Integra Type S isn't too different from the Civic Type R. The wheels are the same specs, 19 by 9.5, 265 all around, wrapped in these really sticky Michelin Pilot 4S. And now, most of the car looks pretty good. The fender flares on the rear, I don't want to say they fall apart a little bit here, but that's kind of what's happening. The rear bumper is completely new, the front bumper is new, but then here we start to see, hey, yeah, they just kind of stuck on another plastic piece here. They've also fixed the exhaust here. It's just strange to me because the Type S has embodied a little bit more of an aggressive stance than the Civic Type R. If I saw both side to side, I, th I just couldn't imagine taking my eyes off the Type S, at least for the first few minutes. It doesn't stop there. You hear that? Noise, theater, pops, crackles, the exhaust here. It's ditched the front resonator that the Type R Civic has. There we go. It's a little bit predictable, but on some occasions I have got the odd crack that I'm, I'm not expecting. It didn't really make me jump out of my skin because there is also additional sound deadening here. The firewall has been uprated for sound deadening, same with the floor, yet it has a much louder exhaust and it speaks to you more than the Civic Type R. It's more racy in that respect. The suspension here, now while all of, wow, torque steer, understeer, almost out of the lane, that's to be expected. <laughs> God, so much fun. Now, while the suspension here, the hardware is in fact identical between the Civic Type R and the Integra Type S, the adaptive suspension has been tuned differently here and it's softer. So it's got a louder exhaust yet softer suspension. How strange is that? Now in the past, the Integra Type R, yeah, it was willing to sacrifice sound deadening, comfort, for lap times, for an aggressive, sporty feel. It was a youthful car. Now, this does still feel like a youthful car, especially in those respects that I mentioned in comparison to the Civic Type R. The Type S just aims to be the most well-rounded front-wheel drive car money can buy for around $50,000 USD. <laughs> and they've done it. Three hundred twenty horsepower, three hundred ten pound-feet of torque. One of the most powerful four-cylinder front-wheel drive cars on the market today. There are a few differences here. The Type S weighs about thirty pounds more than the Civic Type R. Negligible, especially if you have passengers. Now they both have the helical LSD up front, so worrying about grip is not an issue. They're still torque steer. It still pulls you sometimes unexpectedly out of the exit of a corner uh, in a way that you have to kind of compensate for. And the key there is being able to respond with inputs that actually feel good, that actually feel sharp. And it feels alive. It weighs about 3,200 pounds. And there, you see me sawing at the wheel. As if I was in some modified car that was never built for this amount of power. It's manageable, but it, it is so much fun to drive. Uh, the rear end will get loose. The front end bites. What Acura has done here with the steering in comparison to the standard Integra, it's got a dual pinion setup here. <laughs> what it'll do is basically measure the G-forces of my steering input and then at that point, decide how much electric assist to add. This is some of the best electric power steering I've ever experienced. And for the money, it blows my mind. I mean, next to Porsche, 
it feels like it feels somewhat authentic. It's still an authentic driving experience. The Z's steering, while sharp, incredibly dialed in, and a not a variable ratio, which this is, felt a little more inauthentic than this. There was there's way more road feel here. I'm amazed at how much road feel I get here. So sharp. I would love to get this thing on a track. Wow, just wow. The Type S proves you don't necessarily need all wheel drive. Now we do have pretty much the same drive modes here. Honda calls them a little bit different. I think it's R plus. Here we just have comfort, sport and sport plus. The dampers are great in comfort. When I say it's a truly daily drivable, comfortable car, it is. Now if I go to my individual mode, uh, I have currently set, what have I set? My engine to Sport Plus, which of course opens up that valve in the exhaust so we get a couple bangs and pops going on back there, a little bit of popcorn. Uh, suspension I have right now set in comfort because I did drive a long way actually to Kelowna on a road trip, that was great. Uh, and then the gauges in Sport Plus doesn't really change much. Of course we have a boost gauge there if we want. Uh, the steering is also where, actually before that, this is crucial. I don't have many complaints about the Integra Type R. Why? Why? If I want to turn on auto rev match, blasphemy. I know I shouldn't be doing that. But if I wanted to, if I was in traffic and I want the car to blip my downshift for me, number one, first off, you can see here it's blacked out while I'm driving. Second to that, I have to go into vehicle settings and scroll through menus to get to that setting. That should be a button. There's some blank buttons. In fact, there's one blank button right next to traction control which is perfectly suited for that. Please Acura, Honda, change that. As you can tell, more tech means more problems, more weight and higher standards. The car has become a jack of all trades in these modern times and that's not necessarily a bad thing. These higher standards also come down to the fact the line between the Civic Type R and Integra Type S has been blurred to the point of confusion this all began when the DC5 Honda Integra Type R, only ever sold in Japan, also shared the chassis and body of the base car we got here in North America, known of course as the Acura RSX. The North American and Japanese markets were on a collision course. Now what has this created? Well, it's created a bit of a rivalry between the Integra Type S and the Civic Type R. This was not the case when the Integra Type R was introduced to the North American market. It would have been possible to buy an Integra Type R here on the West Coast and not have ever known what a Civic Type R was. Today there are key differences and they've kind of made their way into the <laughs> the automotive enthusiast zeitgeist or culture, whatever you want to call it, right? People have been quick to point out that the new Type R, for good reason, is completed in Japan. The final assembly has been completed in Japan, which makes the car more special, more authentic than the American built Integra Type S, of course, because it is exclusive to the North American market. Now, what would we consider the heart of a car? Well, I would hope you would say the engine. Key is here, all K20Cs, they're built in Ohio. The fine folks down in the middle of the United States have their hands all over every single K20C before they're shipped to Japan for final assembly in the Type R. Now, is that important? Yes, especially when you're using that as a point for the Civic Type R. So let that be known. Now, of course, as boastful Americans would do, we have to one up each other. So the Integra has five extra horsepower. You're never gonna feel that. That's insignificant, completely and utterly insignificant. Also, at the same token, Acura recommends 93 octane in this, whereas the Type R recommended 91 octane fuel. So what do we expect from the Integra Type S? I expected leather, if I'm completely honest. Not surprising here though, everything's leatherette except for the leather steering wheel. We've got a heated steering wheel. We got heated seats here. The seats are a little bit, uh, less bolstered as a, a side effect or a, a kind of a trade off there, but we get the biggest change on the interior you guys other than the sound deadening ELS audio 16 speaker system with the sub in the back. It's phenomenal. 
it's great. It's, it's a daily driver to the max, with exception, of course, we don't have a sunroof. A couple of slightly annoying things here. The cup holders are right in the way of where I'm gonna be shifting. So if you have anything taller than kind of a, a coffee or something in a coffee cup, you're gonna be hitting it. You're gonna chuck it in the back. Uh, and then of course the passenger seat gets manual controls. The driver gets, yeah, four-way adjustable lumbar, which is awesome, power controls, everything like that. The seat's great, ultra suede here, but you only have manual controls on the passenger seat. That's a little bit of a letdown. And the inputs are phenomenal. Uh, the Type S is magnificent. If you've driven any modern Honda uh, that's catered towards the sports car enthusiast, you know the shifter feel is great, it's easy. Uh, this one, the Type S, has a leather shift knob. The engine itself is awesome. It gets 24 miles per gallon on average. I've seen that, if not a little bit better. And it has torque pretty much everywhere. It makes cool boost noises. Uh, if you roll the window down, you'll hear a blow off valve. Uh, you can hear the turbo spool up a little bit and it has that turbo shove that, yeah, you can short shift it and just get the torque, but it encourages you to rev it out. No noticeable VTEC kick, but it does pull all the way to red line. That's what I was looking for. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks so much for watching. It's good. If you guys can't tell, it's really good.